convention on the climate change status of global emission after 5 years of the paris agreement so what is current status you can see here the current status of the different countries all the states have submitted their national contributions to mitigate and adapt the climate change after 5 years of the agreement china has the highest greenhouse gas emission that is 30% of all over the world while us contributes about 13.5% of the emission and the european union the all countries of the europe is in the third place with the 8.7% emission so earlier the emission status was like china at 13% while the us had the highest emission at 25% followed by europe at 22% so now china increased their particular emission to the 30% you can see here so besides india only bhutan and the philippines costa rica ethiopia morocco and the Gambia compiled with the Paris Climate Accord. So whatever they have decided, they have achieved. This is the meaning of this line. So India has also achieved whatever they have said. Bhutan, Philippines, and these all countries also compiled with the Paris Agreement Accord. The contributions are radically insufficient to reach the well below two degrees Celsius that you can see. That is the limit, and are even further from the one one point five degrees Celsius limit given in the Paris Agreement. We are far far. very far from that particular target so that is what the meaning of this third line is now we have to discuss here these three things which are also under the convention on the climate change so these things are the sustainable development goals that we have already seen in the unit 1 so we are not going to repeat it again we will discuss about the isa international solar alliance and the green climate fund gcf 1 by 1 so this was till now about the convention on the climate change further we have to see these two things so that we have to discuss here that is the international solar alliance 2015 a very important alliance because the precursor you can say or the starter of this particular alliance were india and france so for the first time india and france launched this particular alliance in the year 2015 isa is an intergovernmental treaty based organization with a global mandate to catalyze solar growth by helping to reduce the cost of financing and technology So ISA is a nodal agency for implementing one sun, one world, one grid, which seeks to transfer solar power generated in one region to feed the electricity demands of others. So this was an Indian initiative that you have to remember. This is a world level alliance, but this was an Indian initiative that was launched by the Prime Minister, Mr. Modi of India, and the President of the France on 30th November 2015 in Paris. So that was the time. France on the sidelines on the UNFCC conference of the Paris COP21 with 121 solar resource rich countries lying fully or partially between the tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn is the prospective members so if you look at the all over the world when all over the world the electricity generation from the solar light is not possible this is only possible for those countries which are under the line of capricorn and cancer and the equatorial zone so whatever countries are lying in between these zones those can be only part of this international solar alliance because solar energy is only available in these countries up to that level to which you can generate the electricity so that's why 121 countries are only part of this particular alliance if you look at the isa headquarter international solar alliance headquarter so that is situated on the also in india in the gurugram so near to that ncr region delhi in the gurugram we have the headquarter of the isa then 101 members after being joined by the us in this particular accord and now we have almost 121 members so after the us the us was also part of this particular alliance under this 101 101 number member then for the gmos we have a particular protocol which is called as the nagoya protocol for the genetically modified organisms gmo means genetically modified organisms so this protocol is a legal framework for the implementation of one of the objectives of the convention on biological diversity which is the fair and equitable sharing of the benefits arising out of the utilization of the genetic resources so that is under the nagoya protocol the protocol was adopted in the year 2010 in nagoya japan and it entered into force in october 2014 so there would be no harm to any organism as well as environment 
and the utilization of genetic resources to be maximum for all the countries this nagoya protocol was made remember that this is for the genetically modified organisms then we have the ig targets what is the ig targets ig targets were adopted by the convention on the biological diversity cbd that was after the ccc the three outcomes we have seen in the rio so that is one of them is the cbd and this was at the nagoya conference it is a short term plan provides a set of 20 ambitious yet achievable targets collectively known as the ig targets so there were to, there were total 20 targets those all targets were named as the ig targets so this was all about the ig targets a very small topic very small things that you have to remember so remember it carefully then we have the cartagena protocol 2003 on the bio safety this is also under the cbd plan the full name of the treaty is cartagena protocol on bio safety to the convention on the biological diversity this was the full name the international treaty concerned the movement of the living modified organism so gmo was for the nagoya protocol while the cartagena protocol is for the lmos lmos means living modified organisms resulting from modern technology from one nation to another nation so for that another protocol was made that is called as the cartagena protocol so remember that always nagoya nagoya here is for the gmos and the cartagena cartagena is for the lmos lmos are defined under the protocol as the living organisms that have a novel combination of the genetic material secured from the use of the modern technology modern biotechnology So, if any new organism is made, so that new organism would be, if made under the genetically modified technology, so that would be called as a LMO. The protocol was adopted in the year 2000 and it came into force in 2003. The protocol was adopted in Montreal in 2000, but it is named after the Cartagena, the original city in the Colombia where the protocol was supposed to be adopted. So, this was very first time discussed in the Montreal. but this was adopted in this cartagena city near to this colombia that's why the name is cartagena protocol the cartagena protocol on biodiversity seeks to protect biodiversity from the potential risk caused by the living living modified organisms arising from the modern technology so this is how the cartagena protocol on biosafety come into picture so i hope cartagena protocol is clear to you now now the next very important thing that we have to discuss here is the intergovernmental panel on climate change which is also called as ipc that multiple times or when cc gives report for the climate change scenario so i first ipcc report second third and now we have the fourth ipcc report as well so those all are called as the assessment reports of ipcc so this is the intergovernmental body of the united nation all country not the united state united nation responsible for advancing knowledge of human induced climate change it was established in the year 1988 by the wmo world meteorological organization the headquarter of wmo is also in geneva so that's why headquarter of ipcc is also in geneva switzerland so remember that wmo headquarter plus ipcc headquarter both are at geneva and the united nations environmental program both developed this particular ipcc what is the function of the ipcc to provide policy makers with regular assessment that's why the reports are called as the assessment reports of the scientific basic of the climate change its impacts and the future risk and the options for adaptation and mitigation so only this is the work of ipcc they have to assess that all data and they have to give projection what would be the scenario what are the risks what we can do for the mitigation what is the possible adoptions all is provided in the assessment reports of ipcc these reports are very very detailed reports 200 pages 300 pages of report you can find out all the details is provided there the sixth assessment report ar6 of the united nations intergovernmental panel climate change is the sixth in a series of the reports intended to assess scientific technical and the socio economic information concerning the climate change so all that is under this ipcc assessment report so till now we have total six assessment reports the sixth assessment report already released or it is releasing in the year 2022 so because the report is too large so they are not releasing the report at one time 
so frequently in the whole year uh, by few chapters few chapters they generally release the reports and this ar6 was the last uh, successfully released report of this particular year under the ipcc so i hope this is clear to you